Good morning, everyone. It's a really great pleasure and honor being here at this great conference. Uh, I have lots of friends and family in Israel. I live in New York, but I come to Israel at least uh, three or four times a year. And uh, I think it's a great opportunity to be here today and to talk about uh, the future of money, the future of finance, and how a variety of new technologies, including, of course, uh, DLT are going to revolutionize payment system and the provision of financial services. Now, those of you who know uh, me and my views about uh, crypto know that early on I was a skeptic of some uh, parts of this ecosystem. As you know, unfortunately, there were elements of it that were speculative, uh, manipulation, pump and dump schemes, uh, even criminality. And we've seen uh, many of those types of examples. But I would say the following thing. First of all, I've been, always been a critical of the traditional financial system. I was one of the few economists who predicted the, the global financial crisis. And I pointed out the role that traditional banks and other financial institutions played in those boom bubbles and bust of uh, money and credit. So I was never a defender of traditional finance. And secondly, while I was critical of some of the most speculative elements of crypto, I was pointed out there is a distinction between uh, the technology behind it, specifically whether you want to call it uh, DLT or blockchain, from the specific more speculative uh, applications. So the question I want to address is how much uh, technology is going to change the nature of money and finance, and what's the role among other types of technology that uh, blockchain technology can provide for money, payment, and financial services. Um, if I could start with considering money and payment system, and then I'll talk about the future of financial services because the two of them are connected but separate, I would make the following point. Uh, the initial objective of, unquote, crypto, cryptocurrency, was the one of replacing uh, fiat currencies with crypto ones, whether it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, or other ones. But the reality is that most likely, the future of money may be digital, but the future of money may not be cryptocurrencies like uh, Bitcoin. Why do I say that? If you're thinking about the evolution of digital money and digital cash, and I do believe that tokenized or digital cash is the future of payment system, what people talk about today? They talk about uh, central bank digital currencies, they talk about uh, stable coins, they talk about uh, tokenized deposits, and they talk about other, maybe not DLT, but fintech solution to payment systems. Uh, I live in the US where everybody uses PayPal or Venmo or Square or whatever for payments. I go regularly to China where uh, Alipay and WeChat Pay are used for payments. I was recently in Kenya where is M-Pesa. And these are all payment systems that are connected with the traditional financial system that are not necessarily based on, uh, on DLT. And therefore, the idea that you're going to have literally Bitcoin being a means of payment, I think has faded away. And I think the future of money and payments is some combination of uh, central bank digital currency, stablecoin, tokenized deposits, or other fintech solution. <laughs> if I think about the three major economies in the world, say US, China, and the Eurozone, or Europe, all of them have a variety of uh, fintech solutions. As I pointed out, Alipay, WeChat Pay in China, Venmo, PayPal, and others in the US. In the case of central bank digital currency, the current Trump administration has said, we don't even want to talk or think about central bank digital currency, because rightly or wrongly believe that if you have a central bank digital currency, Brick Border is watching you, can control you, you don't have privacy, and therefore that thing is off the table. While China and the European Union are going in the direction of having a CBDC, either at a retail level and or wholesale, and we can discuss the benefits of one or the other. Instead, the US said, uh, if we're not gonna have the CBDC and we want to maintain the role of the US dollar as a global reserve currency, at the time where both China and Europe are going to have their own uh, digital CBDC, what can we do? And the solution in the United States has been, so far, stablecoin with the passage of the Genius, Genius Act. 
In China, until recently, they did not want even to think about stablecoin because it's a command and control society, and the worry is that stablecoin, with their potential degree of anonymity, doesn't give you the control that the CBDC does. And in Europe, the concerns about stablecoins were more related to uh, stability of the financial system, risk of disintermediation of banks, and things of that sort. And uh, I would say that in Europe, where the solution was thought as being either a CBDC but not stablecoin, tokenization of deposit was the approach. So these are the kind of potential solutions. But they're all potential solutions that are essentially digital forms of uh, uh, fiat currencies. They're not really crypto, like Bitcoin or otherwise. And I think there has been also an evolution because initially people thought that uh, forms of digital cash would be necessary for domestic uh, payment systems. But we know domestic payment systems are already quite sophisticated, whether it's fintech solution or other ones. We don't need really a CBDC or even a stable coin to make payments within the US. Uh, what is it more important is that for cross-border transaction, you need something that is digital. And therefore, I think that stable coins in the US are going to be more important for maintaining the role of the US dollar as a reserve currency and for cross-border transaction than for domestic transaction where PayPal, Venmo, and other solutions are going to be uh, as good as they are. So for what money is concerned, I would say the future is a variant of digital forms of uh, effectively fiat. You're not going to replace it with something else, whether US, Europe, or other countries. What about the future of finance? I think that in the future of finance, we're going to see an evolution where we have different types of players. Uh, you have traditional financial institution, and many of them are evolving. You have fintech solutions that are not necessarily based on DLT. You have DLT solutions that, however, are called DLT, but many of them are centralized and they're permission, rather than decentralized and permissionless, because of a bunch of reasons why uh, you want to have that centralization and you want to have some degree of permissioning. And then there are truly decentralized finance solutions. So those are the kind of uh, four options that are evolving over time. Now, the emergence of uh, blockchain solution I think is driven by at least three factors. Factor number one is that finally we have proper types of regulations, both in US, in Europe, in UK, and other parts of the world. Of course, the passage of the Genius Act in the United States and other regulation finally give you a sandbox for doing uh, uh, digital transactions. In EU, the MICA uh, regulation and legislation. In the UK, the new digital sandbox for digital assets and currencies. And nearby UAE, with the regulation that their own authority, VAR is making for digital assets and uh, payment system. So that's the first one. Finally, we have proper regulation, and proper regulations are key. You need safety, you need privacy, you need proper AML, you need proper KYC, you have to make sure that consumers are not ripped off because there are lots of scams, if not criminality, and having those regulations are fundamental. This idea that you could have a wild west where you can create crypto assets or cryptocurrency without any regulation supervision, without any MAL or KYC was nonsense. And therefore, I think even the industry recognizes as needed, necessary, and their passage provides you a framework for developing these uh, digital assets. Secondly, I would say that uh, recently there is emergence not only of forms of digital or tokenized cash that I described before, but other things. First, tokenization of real and financial assets. That's occurring. It's going to be really increasing significantly, and the players are both traditional financial institutions who are providing that tokenization from the JP Morgan to the Black Rocks to many others that are instead the native to blockchain firms and solutions. Secondly, uh, there is the buildup of what I would refer to as the supervised DLT infrastructure for things like financial services, for clearing, settlement, custody. Over time, it's going to provide you financial services that are cheaper, more efficient, safe, and so on. In the case of financial services, there are now DLT solutions for things like repo transactions or the, even the issuance uh, recently of government bonds. So that's going to certainly accelerate. 
and DLT solutions are going to be part of the solution. The question is, can you have solutions that are fully decentralized as opposed to those that are called DLT but that are effectively centralized and permissioned? And I think the jury is open on whether one or the other. I think the answer to that question is going to depend, can we have proper MAL KYC in a decentralized finance kind of world? And the third element of it I think is happening is that the payment networks in the world are becoming increasingly integrated. Even traditional players like Visa and MasterCard, of course, are opening up to dealing with uh, uh, stable coins and other digital assets, and vice versa. FinTech providers that are not a native digital DLT like PayPal, Venmo, and others are going in the space of blockchain types of solution. A um, few other observations about Israel and the ecosystem here. I'm not, only, I'm not totally familiar with it, but I think there are a few things that are happening in Israel, apart from having lots of also great entrepreneurs in this space, that are going in the direction where Israel could be one of the leaders of innovation in uh, not just DLT and blockchain, but also in financial services. First of all, as you know, the Bank of Israel is considering, like some other countries in the world, the creation of a digital shekel that will allow you to do transaction, either wholesale or retail, to be discussed uh, with more efficiency. Secondly, there has been this recent project, Eden, that approved that government bonds can be issued and settled via an Ethereum-based uh, infrastructure. That's uh, one example, and I think we're going to see more of them. Three, the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange is preparing its clearing and settlement backbone for having the use of DLT infrastructure. And finally, there is a series of uh, uh, startups and companies that are going to be providing uh, uh, safe and private and secure uh, local stock for a variety of uh, financial transactions. Examples are things like Fireblocks or Stark workwear, uh, workwear for zero knowledge proof types of validation that probably is a better form of validation compared to uh, proof of work or proof of stake. So lots of stuff is happening and I think it's going to be uh, one of the leaders in these types of innovation, Israel. So as final remarks, I'll make the following thing. First of all, we should demand and require resilience that is of bank grade level. We need cyber hygiene, we need proper KYC and ML, and we need supervisory and regulatory clarity, meaning we should be preparing for a system of financial infrastructure that is one, DLT agile, two, eventually quantum resistant cryptography, and that takes away the speculative elements from payments and savings. You don't want your salaries, you don't want your bank uh, accounts, you don't want your savings to be subject to risk of uh, things that are improper. So we need a system that's going to be resilient to stress that may occur. And therefore, from my point of view, I'm somebody who is pragmatic. I don't think that one solution is going to fit all. As I pointed out, there's many alternative ones that are going to probably converge to each other. But I think that we should be focusing, one, on having properly regulated cash and payment system, properly regulated uh, financial service and instruments, things that create an infrastructure that provides you uh, measurable utility and safety. And therefore, DLT can be part of the structure that upgrades and improves the plumbing system. And from this point of view, I think Israel is one of the hubs of great innovation and therefore, we need to build the rail that provide our economies, our payment system, our financial services, and our citizens with things and tools that we can trust, because trust is fundamental for money and for financial services. So thank you. Those are my observations.